This video is kindly sponsored by Squarespace. Stick around to find out more about creating your own website, online store, and much more. Recently I've been thinking about two sci-fi adaptations I watched relatively recently, those being Dune Part 1 and Foundation. Dune was comfortably my favourite film of 2021, and while Foundation certainly struggled to fit the narrative of the books into a coherent story, I very much enjoyed the show. But what I want to talk about today was the world building of these stories, because the more I think about it, I feel like they're sort of unique among the pantheon of other popular sci-fi shows and movies. And if any aspiring or professional writers stumble across this video, it may perhaps inspire you to approach your burgeoning sci-fi universes a little differently. When it comes to imagining what a space-faring civilization of the future might look like, most sci-fi presents us with quite an appealing vision. Star Trek, Star Wars, and many more have presented us with this image of a future where travelling from planet to planet is as easy as catching a bus or a plane. Space travel is largely comfortable and hassle-free. Though of course every ship can't be as luxurious as a galaxy-class starship, the worst it gets is like riding in the back of a freight train. We are also presented with this idea of interstellar warfare being like the grand naval battles of the Age of Sail, huge fleets of ships colliding with each other in these spectacular clashes. It's a familiar set of tropes, and this video is by no means trying to make out building a sci-fi universe like this is bad, but the way Dune and Foundation handle this aspect of the universe is quite different. Before we get into that though, ad time. This video is sponsored by Squarespace. As someone whose livelihood is primarily on YouTube, I know it's always a wise policy to carve out your own space online with a website, store, or portfolio of work. Squarespace is ideal if you want to create a website quickly and easily. No coding needed, simply select a pre-built, fully customizable template, and then adjust it to your own style and layout using easy-to-use drag-and-drop tools, or build one from scratch if that's more your thing. Either way, you'll be able to have your own website up and running in no time. For my own site, obviously I make a lot of videos, which is why Squarespace's portfolios, galleries, and video block features are ideal for the kind of site I want to create. Squarespace also allows you to create each website with a custom protected domain name, which can help your website reach the right audience. For example, by using a specific domain name like .art. All this and more is available for you to check out by clicking the link in the description. Head over to squarespace.com forward slash Rowan J. Coleman and use the promo code Rowan J. Coleman for 10% off your first purchase. Thank you again to Squarespace for helping me keep the lights on over here. And now, back to the video. Both of the books these adaptations are based on came out before NASA put a man on the moon. In fact, Foundation came up before the space race even started. And so for Isaac Asimov and Frank Herbert, not only did they have to imagine what a spacefaring civilization would look like, they had to conceive of a method of space travel entirely. Hard science fiction like The Expanse does a brilliant job of showing us just how difficult space travel is. Without magical technologies like gravity plating and inertial dampeners, the realities of space travel are huge obstacles to overcome. The Expanse book series had to invent a fictional drive technology just to make routine transit between Earth and Mars tenable, let alone the miraculous technology seen in Star Trek and Star Wars which allows ships to quickly hop between star systems. Dune and Foundation both fall into this strange sweet spot of not being strictly hard sci-fi, but many real-world obstacles to space travel are taken into account with their universes. Much like The Expanse, space travel in these universes is hard, requiring immensely powerful technologies. The slower form of travel in Foundation means months if not years travelling between star systems in gigantic mobile colonies. The fastest form of travel is so dangerous for human beings, passengers must be placed in the form of stasis to survive, or mutated into forms of life some would even hesitate to call human. There are few conventional space battles in Foundation. Instead, military ships in this universe function more like mobile weapons platforms. The objective of an opposing force is not to meet these vessels with another fleet of ships, but rather to prevent their launch or disable and capture while in transit. And of course, in Dune, there are no space battles. Faster than light travel is such a monumental achievement, once again requiring humans to mutate into other creatures to make it possible. Yet space travel in Dune is just that, travel. Folding space is simply a way of transporting people, equipment, and resources from one planet to the other. 
Battles take place on the land, in the air, and on the sea, because even though FTL travel is possible, Dune also never forgets the true scale of the planets themselves. It's a well-worn trope in science fiction, but in reality the idea of actually ruling an entire planet is just massive in scope. One only needs to look at the incredible amount of diversity on our own planet to understand how having dominion over all of it may not even be possible. Dune is a story which grapples with the fate of the known universe, and yet it's almost entirely confined to one world. The majority of the action in Foundation is likewise limited to only a handful of planets, despite the galaxy itself being at stake. There is a tendency in sci-fi to paint various factions as a monolith. Not only does an entire alien race share the same culture and beliefs, but the dozens if not hundreds or even thousands of worlds inhabited by this race are also largely the same. Again, that's not to say this approach is bad. In fact, Star Trek is very good at using this quirk of world building for some very poignant storytelling. But realistically, the chances of a spacefaring society, even one made up of only one race, working this way is pretty much impossible. The only way it conceivably makes sense in works like Star Trek is thanks to those miracle technologies like warp drive and replicators. With these technologies, establishing a colony on another planet would be relatively easy. A single, large ship could make a few dozen round trips to deliver colonists and get them started with some replicators, which could quickly synthesize equipment and building materials. Any additional resources required could be quickly delivered from a nearby star system. But in Dune and Foundation, their methods of faster than light travel, though actually faster than warp drive, are extremely resource intensive. Therefore, any colony which wanted to establish itself as more than a basic settlement would need to bring a hell of a lot of stuff on the trip. And because of the nature of folding space and void travel seemingly having no real distance limit, it's entirely possible to colonize a world on the other side of the galaxy from where you left off. Rather than the gradual expansion of territory as seen in Star Trek, it seems like the civilizations in Dune and Foundation came about as a form of man-made panspermia. Groups who ventured out into the cosmos to seed their own worlds. Centuries later, these worlds grew to form their own cultures, wholly different from where their ancestors came from. Though there are no aliens in these universes, as far as we know, the various peoples of these universes feel alien to each other. This is where I feel like imagining a sci-fi setting in this way could also help conjure up some really original ideas. These days on Earth, certain forms of government are seen as outdated, like kingdoms and empires. But on some faraway colony with a smaller group of people, I could totally see some megalomaniac declaring himself as a king or emperor. Perhaps one of the colonies just let the computers take over and do all the governing. A writer could have a lot of fun coming up with ideas for what happened to each of these colonies, and how they would interact if the societies they birthed ever encountered one another. A work which takes this idea to an extreme is All Tomorrows by C.M. Cosman, in which humans on colonized worlds are bioengineered by a malevolent alien race into all kinds of bizarre and horrifying forms, who end up having their own unique histories. Rather than simply assuming humans will crack faster than light drives at some point in the future, perhaps it's worth working in some of these limitations. Maybe ask yourself, if travel between star systems is so incredibly difficult, how is it achieved in my story, and what effect did that have on the people in it? I think interrogating this line of logic could potentially conjure up some really fresh and original settings and stories. So I'd say it's worth taking some inspiration from these works and how they built their universes. You never know what you might come up with. Thank you for watching. If you like these videos, subscribe and hit the bell icon to stay up to date on my new uploads. If you want to help the channel grow, join my patrons or my YouTube members, where you can see videos early as well as some other exclusive content. Speaking of which, I'd like to quickly thank all of my patrons and members who are now appearing on screen. Have a good one, and as always, live long and prosper.